Hello and welcome back. So what I want to do today is talk about transformers. And in particular, I want to look at the way in which the transformer is built has an impact on the transformer's performance. And in particular, what I want to look at is the transformer's coupling factor and the isolation in between the windings. Now, normally, if you need a transformer in your design, you go through the design process, you work out what sort of inductances you need, what sort of turns ratio you need between primary and secondary side. Based on the core properties, you work out how many turns you need. But depending on what you're using your transformer for, the way in which you build a transformer can have some extra effects on the circuit's performance. So what I want to look at today is how the transformer score and its continuity, as well as how the turns are placed onto this score, has an impact onto the various parasitics of the transformer. So if you're curious about this and much more, then keep watching. So first of all, what sort of parasitics can we get? I mean, is there more to a transformer than just how many turns it has? Now in an older video, I talked about how a transformer can be modeled using LT spice. And apart from the winding inductance and the wire resistance, there are a few more parasitics that need to be taken into account. And these parasitics can be influenced by the way in which the transformer is constructed. One of the most important aspects of a transformer is its coupling factor, which in other words is a reflection of how much of the magnetic field generated by one inductor is shared by the other one. Now ideally you would want to have perfect magnetic field sharing, but that doesn't really occur in real life. But the more of this magnetic field is shared, the more efficiently the transformer will work. So normally you would want to have this as high as possible. Now another major aspect to consider is how the two inductors influence each other other than through magnetic fields, specifically through electric fields. So what is the capacity in between the inductors? Now this parameter is specifically important when we're using a transformer for things like switching converters. So the higher the capacity in between the windings is, the more noise issues you will end up having. So ideally you want to have very small capacity in between the inductors and closely related to the capacity, Another parameter that needs to be taken into account is the voltage isolation in between the inductors. So what sort of voltage difference can you have in between your two isolated inductors while still keeping the circuit safe? So what sort of breakdown voltage can you ensure? And this is a parameter specifically important when your transformer works with high voltages or when there are specific requirements regarding isolation in between the primary and secondary. So if you have some sort of device plugged into the mains AC, you don't want to shock yourself with the secondary. That's why you're using a transformer in the first place. Now for today's experiments, I will be winding various transformers and I will be putting them onto an ETD29 type of core. I will be winding two coils, so a primary and a secondary, both having a hundred turns. And to evaluate the various constructions, I will be on the one side measuring the coupling factor using the measurement technique in which I measure the primary and then I once leave the secondary open and secondly I short circuit it. And the other parameter to measure will be the capacitance in between the two inductors in which I will be short circuiting both inductors and measuring the capacity in between these two wires. So how many ways are there to wind the transformer? Well, let's start with the basics. The first technique to look at is in which the two windings are wound one on top of the other. So for this, I will be winding the primary into two layers, so two layers of 50 turns. I will be adding a layer of isolation tape, so high voltage isolation in between the windings. And then the secondary will be again two layers of 50 turns, and I will be leaving it open so that the winding can be seen from the outside. Now this is the most basic way in which you can build a transformer. It doesn't matter how many turns you have, how many layers each winding ends up having, or well, how many inductors are on the transformer. You can put as many as you want, one on top of the other. And well, this is what the inductor turned out like. So next, it's time to measure it. First thing to measure, the capacity. And for that, I prepared the setup right here. So I got my capacitance meter, 
and the two windings of the inductor are short-circuited and connected to the two poles of the capacitance meter. So for our first inductor, we get about 95 picofarads. And this is without the magnetic core. Now, with or without this, we should have no impact, since this is not a conductive material. But just for the sake of measuring, if I add the core, well, we get roughly one extra picofarad. So this can be down to the positioning, since one picofarad plus or minus is quite easy to obtain, or maybe my core has some conductive properties. We'll see that better in our later experiments. But now, let's turn to the coupling factor. And for that, we need to measure the inductance of the inductor. So first, let's check how the inductors are coupled without a magnetic core, so only with an air core. So right now I have about 74 microfenry when the secondary is open, and if I short circuit it, I go down to 45. So that works out to a coupling factor of about 62%. Now let's see how this coupling factor is impacted by adding the magnetic core. Now I would like to point out that for these experiments, I also added a small air gap in the form of a bit of tape so that we do get a bit of leakage inductance. Otherwise, we would have so little leakage that it would be very difficult to measure. So we get a primary inductance of 3.92 millihenry with the secondary in open circuit. And if we create a short circuit on the secondary, we go down to about 200 microhenry. So that gives us a coupling factor of 97.4%. So one thing that will improve coupling is the addition of the magnetic core, since the issues with the coupling come from the magnetic flux that does not go through the core. The better the core is, the more continuous it is, the more of the flux will go through it rather than through the air around it. So now if we look at the two effects, first of all, starting with the interwinding capacity, this is mainly caused by the proximity of the two coils one to the other. Basically, what we have is two cylinders, one inside of the other. So we have a certain surface area and a certain distance filled in with an isolator, so a dielectric. And if we would want to reduce this capacity, well, we can either increase the distance in between the coils or reduce the surface area. Now, on the other hand, our coupling factor is limited by the magnetic flux, which rather than going through the magnetic core, is closing in in between the two coils. So the secondary is seeing magnetic fields going both ways, which cancel out. And if we would want to improve on this, we would want to bring the two inductors closer together so that less of the leakage flux can go in between the coils. So we can't really improve on both properties. If we want to improve on the capacity, move the two inductors further apart, then we would also be reducing the coupling factor because we would get more leakage flux, and vice versa, if we bring things together, we would increase capacity. So let's try to improve things one at a time. So first, let's work on improving magnetic coupling. And one technique that can be used to perform this is splitting the inductors. So for this, what I will be building is a transformer in which the primary is split into two layers and in between these two layers, we put in our secondary. Now, it's worth mentioning that if this is performed, special isolation measures need to be taken into account. So since we have now two interfaces between the primary and the secondary, we need two times our special insulation tape in between these two windings. So application of this sort of method will be a bit more costly than the previous one. So now let's see if it's any good. So now the second inductor looks mostly like the first inductor, other than this extra wire hanging out. So this is where the first half and the second half of the primary have been interconnected. And we can start our measurements with measuring the capacity. So again, we can see that we have 173 picofarads. So it's not really double what we had before, but it's much more. And also if we add the magnetic core, we gain a few picofarads, so not a lot. So now let's turn to the coupling factor measurement. So first we have our transformer without a core and our 
secondary is an open circuit and we get 55 microhenry. And now if we short circuit the secondary, we go down to 25. So that gives us a coupling factor of about 74%. So it's quite better compared to last time. But now let's check out how this behaves with the addition of the magnetic core. So now I added the magnetic core, we have 3.76 millihenry when the secondary is open. And we drop down to 170 microhenry when the secondary is short circuited. And that gives us a total of 97.7%. So as expected, this method of coiling improved our coupling factor. Main reason for this being that part of the flux that was not closing in through the magnetic core was closing on the outside of the primary. So that the secondary always was containing flux going one way. Now, this method isn't perfect, of course. We still had some leakage flux going in between the two halves of the primary, so we didn't get a perfect coupling factor. But at the same time, it's also important to notice that our interwinding capacity went up. And the main reason for this being that now our secondary is exposed to the primary on two sides. So in theory, we can get double the capacity. And in practice, well, that will depend on the way in which the transformer is constructed. Now, of course, this method of coiling can be further expanded. So depending on how many turns you have into how many layers these turns are wound, you can have more layers interwound. So not just a split of the primary, but splitting into far more layers and then all of them interbunched. And that will also somewhat improve coupling. But is there any better way of building a transformer to improve coupling? Well, while taking apart a commercial product, a signal isolation transformer, I noticed that the way in which this thing was built was that the primary and the secondary were twisted together and then both coiled at the same time onto the magnetic core. So how would this behave? Now for this experiment, I won't be twisting the wires. I will be winding them in parallel lines and see what happens. So my inductor will be wound at the same time. So both primary and secondary will be put at the same time in parallel lines. Now it's worth mentioning that this is quite a difficult way to coil the transformer. And it will only work if you have a one to one turns ratio, because for every turn of the primary, you have one turn of the secondary. And from an isolation point of view, well, you can't really add tape around the primary. So the only isolation you will get between the two windings will be the enamel coating on the wires, which is quite thin. So regardless of how well or poorly this technique works, it can only be applied in very specific applications where interwinding capacity and isolation don't really matter. And for building this transformer, I used two wires of two different colors and we can nicely see this on the finished product that the two windings are one right next to the other. So first thing to measure is the interwinding capacity. And I have the setup prepared right here. So you can see that we have 828 picofarads. So much more than previously. And this is with no magnetic core. But if we add a core into this, we can see that it doesn't really change. So the presence or absence of the core has no impact in this case. But now let's turn to our other measurement, the coupling factor. And here we can see that with the magnetic core, we have 54 microhenry on our primary when the secondary is open. And when we short circuit it, we go all down to 23 microhenry. So this gives us a coupling factor of 75.8%. So slightly better than what we previously had. So now let's turn to our other measurement, the one in which we add the magnetic core. And this time with an open secondary, we have 3.9 millihenry. And with a short circuited secondary, we have 160 microhenry. So this gives us a coupling factor of 97.9%, slightly better than previously. So we can see that this technique is better. We have far more limited flux going in between the turns, but it's still not a perfect technique. So we still don't get an 100% coupling factor. And this is especially visible when there's no magnetic core. 
but if coupling factor is all that you care about, well, there's not much better you can do than this sort of winding. But now if we talk about the capacitive coupling between the coils, well, we, here we had quite a bad situation. So because of the close proximity in between all of the turns, we had quite a large increase in capacity compared to our previous coiling techniques. But now let's focus on a different coiling technique, one that focuses more on reducing capacitive coupling rather than on improving magnetic coupling. So this is the final constructive method that I want to look at today. And this involves creating separate compartments for the coils. So this technique is widely used in high voltage transformers where voltage separation and isolation between the coils is critical. So rather than relying on using some sort of tape in between the coils, this technique relies on separating the coils physically using the bobbin into separate compartments. So in one set of compartments, we have our primary. In another set, we have our secondary. And here, voltage isolation is provided by the bobbin wall. Now, depending on construction, you will have either a single structure with the two coils, or you could have two different structures that are both placed onto the same magnetic core. Now, it's also worth mentioning that this technique will reduce the space available for your coils. So the space inside of your magnetic core will be on the one side limited by the bobbin as you would normally have it, but you also have this extra wall added into it. So this might be something to take into account when you're working out if your coils will actually fit onto the bobbin. So now let's see how this thing works. So to build this transformer, I used a single bobbin with two compartments. And while well, I tried to keep the distance in between the wires as big as possible. So when I took the wires from the secondary, I tried to keep them at a certain distance from the primary. And well, this is how it turned out. So now let's start off by measuring the capacity in between the two inductors. So right now I try to zero my device and I get well 0.2 picofarads. And if we connect our transformer, we see that we have a very small capacity in between the windings. So only 3.5 picofarads, completely different value than what we had before. And now if I add my magnetic core, we see that we have a slight increase. So it seems that my core does have some sort of conductive properties. But now let's turn to our other measurement to see just what sort of coupling factor we get between the two coils of this transformer. So now we see our transformer without a magnetic core. We see we have 97 microhenry on the primary. And if I short circuit the secondary, we see a very small decrease to 95 microhenry. So this time we have a very small coupling factor of 14.4%. But now let's see how it behaves if we add the magnetic core. So we start off with an initial inductance of 4.04 millihenry. And by short circuiting the secondary, we go down to 790 microhenry. So this time we see a coupling factor of 89.7%. So again, lower than with all of our previous measurements. So as expected, we did see quite a good improvement in interwinding capacity. And this is mainly because we have reduced our surface area, but we also increased the distance between the two coils. Further improvement, of course, can be obtained by increasing these distances even more. Now, on the other hand, this came at the price of reduced coupling factor. So this time, any sort of leakage flux can clearly close around the primary without having an interaction with the secondary. So one benefit can be obtained at the price of the other. So in the end, depending on what's more important to you, low capacity in between the coils and high isolation voltage, or on the other hand, a good magnetic coupling, one method of coiling or another should be applied. Now it's also worth mentioning that the coupling factor will highly be influenced by the magnetic core. So the more continuous it is, the higher the coupling factor will be since more of the magnetic field will go through the core. So adding things like air gaps will reduce your coupling. And on the other hand, if you want high capacitive isolation without really compromising your coupling factor, there are certain methods that can be applied. For example, adding shielding layers into the transformer. But that is a topic for a different time. For now, 
Hope you got some useful information out of this. Leave your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe to be up to date with all my videos. And see you next time. Bye bye.